afternoon. So, after lunch, you know, it's a difficult phase. So, let us have some exercise. Okay. Um, topic I am given is future of satellite images. Most of you, in your roles within various organizations, you might have been dealing with satellite images. Some of you more intimately, some of you in a different way. Now, all of you, if you have to predict what is going to be the most striking change in the next, at the end of next five years with respect to the satellite images, what you are, what will be your bet, okay? You have to write in just half a sentence in a phrase or one sentence, what is going to be the most striking change? You know, the satellite resolutions, the image resolutions have been improving, <coughs> spatial resolutions, the spectral characteristics are changing. Now we have companies which say, whenever you want, we can provide images of certain quality. So, from your own feeling of looking at things over the past many years, what is going to be your prediction? All of you write down, okay? All of you write down. What is going to be your prediction about? There is also, you know, very formidable competitors coming for satellite images. What are they? Images from drones. So, lot of investment is taking place, though not in India, in other countries. Studies have been made by famous <coughs> consulting organizations and so on, predicting a big impact to the industry, to the jobs, and to the field of analytics with the drone images. So, there is also some disruptive elements. So, taking all into account, what is going to be your bet? Okay, can you kindly write down? Okay, just one minute. All right. Now, let us see what is the kind of sample predictions we get. So, what is the size of this room? About 50? 50. So, what percentage shall we have? 20 percent? 20 percent of the people. Okay. So, can I have from the last row what is what is a prediction written? Last row. One of you. Madam? You have written your, your prediction? No. Somebody who has written the last row? What is going to happen to satellite images after five years? Last row, none of you have done this side. Okay, let me come to you, madam, you. No, behind. So, your prediction is satellite images demand is going to drop down drastically. What percentage? 50 percent? Okay, because it is more detailed, it is cheaper. Okay, so it will go down. Okay, now let me come to this side. Okay, okay. can you, can you read out what is your prediction? One of you, please. Uh, I would say to you, like, but every day you are going to have image. Uh, in 50 years, like every day, like two, three images going to come for entire world. 
from okay. the satellite. That is what I predict. Okay, very good. I think there is a movement, reasonably a good a start has been made towards that. There is real systems to realize this goal, okay, of seeing every part of the world at a certain resolution. What resolution you expect? I expect meters. How many? How many meters? Resolution? One meter. One meter a whole world. Every day. Every day. Okay. It is, it is quite challenging. Uh, can I have from you? Madam, you, you volunteered. Okay, you, you predict that the space environment is going to be more challenging, more difficult, more riskier because the debris which is already there, it is going to grow with a small number of satellites. Already every year, more than 200 satellites are being launched every year. Hardly it used to be 2 to 12 was the maximum when satellites were bigger. Now with when satellites have become miniaturized with higher capabilities and became very cheap or inexpensive, a large number of even universities are designing and launching satellites. It has become a more vibrant activity, but this is going to create problems of <coughs> traffic in space. There could be higher probability for collisions which are disastrous. Why space collisions are so concerning? It is because they travel. Can you guess what is the speed with which a satellite will travel at 1000 kilometers height or 500 kilometers height? Hmm? Ah, so it is how much? More than 20,000 kilometers per hour. So with that kind of speeds, even a small object of one inch size can punch and destroy a big satellite. Okay? So space environment is going to be very challenging, that is your prediction. What is the consequence of that? We are talking about satellite images. I asked you the question about satellite images. So what is going to be the impact on satellite images? Will it, will it increase, it is business as usual or satellite imaging activity will come down? It will increase in spite of debris. So debris is not going to matter, uh, the humanity is going to face that challenge and still we are going to have uh, the activity, imaging activity will go on. Okay, very good. This is the third prediction. Let us come to this side. What is your prediction? Yeah. Uh, I think for global uh, constellation of satellites would be uh, possible. Global constellation of satellites are possible. Already there are many constellations. Every country has its own. I think yes. that globally uh, program will be there. Uh, like all countries would have a common program. Okay. I, I you see this part always you know governments to come together and have a common program to have a constellation of satellites is very very challenging because there are more than 100 nations and more than 100 countries together and commonly agreeing it takes decades as we are seeing in the United Nations. So, it is going to be very challenging, but at the same time, your prediction is going to be practical in another way. How it is happening? Because the companies, they pull together money, resources, they are investing and they are ha having global service. So globally, the services of constellations are available through a commercial route. Okay? There are also cooperative arrangements between countries 
for working together, sharing, sharing the images. For example, in disaster like situations, in disaster management, there are agreements, international agreements to share data. We also do that. Many other countries also do that. These are international disaster charter and there are also other initiatives to facilitate that. So constellations are going to be reality and constellations are going to be global. They provide a global service. That is your, uh, your feeling and they are going to grow. And this trend is already being seen as we can see a little later how it is happening. Okay. Now, can you tell what has, what is your? The space applications are likely to be uh, more and more getting restricted to communication and navigation. Okay. And the imagery will mostly be from people's satellites or drones, which are in the, uh, not even uh, uh, Leo orbits, much below that. Okay. So the imagery in case if required, it could be probably from geostationary with improving accuracies and uh, sensitivities of the cameras. Okay, uh, you have put many points, many concepts into one single prediction. Uh, the first prediction you have made is there will be less prominence, prominent role for the earth observations as compared to other applications of space like space communications and space navigation, okay, positioning from space, okay. And also the imaging functions, the satellites preferred will be operating in low, lower orbits. Why do you have to come lower in orbit, in height? What is the advantage? Hmm? So you can see more clearly, in, in other words, spatial resolution is going to be better as you come down. So aircraft imagery, satellites can never compete because you know it is so close to earth. So his prediction is satellites are going to come down. But I want to ask you why if it is advantageous to image from a lower altitude for 60 years people have invested so much money, so much research and all that. Why they are operating satellites at heights more than 400 kilometers, 500, even going up to 800 kilometers for imaging? No, gravity of the earth you can balance by the speed of the velocity of the satellite. Okay. Uh, the satellite, uh, yeah. So it will cover the area beyond their own territory. Okay. Uh, Means if India wants to see some other territory. You can do that even from higher or orbits. Yeah. You know, even if you go higher and higher, it is better. You can see a larger area. If you go to a geostationary orbit height, which is 35,784 or whatever it is. <laughs> so many kilometers, close to 36,000 kilometers, if you go, you can see 40 percent of the Earth's disk, Earth's area. Higher you go, you can see other, other countries also. We will see, that is a one very important aspect of space activity. You can see other countries without getting into any legal problems, okay? So, but why people are not putting at 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers? Why they are going? Yeah, please. So, if they are putting down, they can only capture certain things. But when it comes to the atmosphere, it doesn't change from one meter to one meter or something like that. So, uniformly at 100 kilometers altitude, have a circular orbit, why can't you image so that you can see, lower you come down, you know, you can see, you know, you, your resolution multiplies. <coughs> why, why should you go at 400? In addition to gravity and other forces, the atmosphere is 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, this is the reason. The drag, atmospheric drag, although atmosphere is at micro level at a height of 100 kilometers, above 100 kilometers, it is considered it is space, outer space. Virtually air is not there, but even that small amount of small atoms, molecules present at a height of 100 or 200 kilometers, because the speed is very high, still they offer resistance. So the life of satellites drastically comes down. If you look at the history of space, Soviet Union, every week they used to launch a satellite because they had the power to launch. Rockets were very powerful, they launched every week and they used to come down because they used to, their aim is to take pictures over other territories, particularly US. So it used to come down very, very quickly. So life drastically comes down if you lower in altitude. So normally, if you want to have a year, one year life, even then you need to go above 400 kilometers. So that, that is one reason. So there will be challenges if you want to come down too much in orbital altitude, your trade-off, you have to launch so, so frequently, you have to launch and replenish, it is not very practical. So, uh, but beyond 400 kilometers, lower you are, the better for you to see the resolution, okay? So, your prediction basically is there will be less importance for imaging, even if imaging were to be there, it should be with a better quality. It should, satellites should be operating at as low altitudes as possible. What about you, madam? Okay, that is very, very good observation. You, you see, a remote sensing is not just remote sensing of Earth. You know, we, we are going to be interested when whole world, the, the countries with foremost programs, they are going to see how, how to reach planets, look at the resources in planets. Can we get some alternate fuels, say, from lunar surface or Mars, whether it is possible to, you know, create a habitable conditions, which all, the, these are the goals for which international community, particularly even private sector today, you know, is, they are working, investing a lot of money and resources for that. So, imaging of planetary atmospheres, developing new techniques, okay, most of the remote sensing, we are only looking at the scattered radiation reflected from the original source that is sun. This is all remote sensing. All we are playing about is to look at what is the reflectance, measure the re reflectance with certain accuracy, okay, for certain gray levels. You develop a scale for that. Your instrument is capable of measuring that reflectance. That energy you are just seeing and interpreting, measuring objects on earth. Most of the remote sensing activities centered around this. But is that all the aim of remote sensing? Remote sensing originally has developed to understand the nature of objects from a distance in a non-invasive way. So there are many other aspects of interaction between the matter and energy that you can explore and develop. And only when challenges are posed to you, you know, you can develop such capabilities. Planetary environment puts you all such challenges. So possibly imaging will also diversify from looking at Earth's problems to even, you know, activities related to interplanetary uh, inter bodies, celestial bodies, resources on comets, or asteroids for which you know now plants are being drawn up.
So, this is a good observation, uh, very different from what others thought. Can I have uh, some, uh, yeah, please. Yeah. So today uh, we are doing all this machine learning and uh, deep learning everything sitting yeah. here on uh, Earth. Yeah. So maybe five years, six years from the day, the satellites themselves will be able to think artificially. Yes. Uh, they collect the imagery. Yes. And uh, it's directly feeding information rather than allowing man to process it and then take uh, deduce information. Very good observation. Okay. Why to get so much of data? As mentioned, you know, if we have to get for the entire earth, earth's land surface itself is 29 percent of the total earth's surface and even that 29 percent of the earth's surface, if we have to image every day at one meter resolution, you can calculate how many pita bits it would involve. And how, why to download, transmit, even how that kind of challenge you need to have number of satellites to be able to do that. So, you have a processing capability at source, you process, process add intelligence and now anyway technology relating to memories and processors, they are exponentially improving. So, let us look at the possibility of having intelligence added to the on orbit activity, imaging plus some level of pre-processing and even analysis, can we do it on space and make the satellites more intelligent. This is a one, one of the very important directions which is, which is going on or the, the, the best of researchers are looking into these possibilities, okay. So, that, that what about you? What is your prediction? I, I saw the hand. You you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was also saying that there would be seamless integration between models and uh, so finally the output would also be like very user friendly and a lot of fusion activities will be happening where the data from different uh, satellites would be combined together and. Uh, okay, I, I I think you know you you have made one very important observation. Okay. All that machines do is pre-programmed, mostly statistical analysis they do. There is no semantic information, knowledge in the images. The human interaction along with the images, it is a very, very important aspect. If we ignore that, it is going to be of limited value, real value. So, we cannot do without good human intervention. So, uh, here is a prediction which says that, you know, there, there, there should be a good human activity along with the power, using the power of the new tools, new techniques, new machines and so on. Very good. I think that is a very perceptive observation. Can I have your prediction? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, uh, it, it will happen so as per our requirement we can change orbits and we can take as per uh, the size of the imagery can change or whatever. The, okay. So, uh, you feel that after five years, there will be efforts to make satellites more agile. Agile not only in terms of in their own orbit, once you put in an orbit, more or less uh, the orbit is fixed for a satellite. Okay. But here is a prediction, there will also be developments to make satellites more agile and flexible to change the orbits, change the heights. In fact, this is precisely one of the exercises when Cargill war was there, we were called, Dr. Kalam was there. He said that can you quickly do within one, one year, can you do? a satellite 
you use whatever systems are that are available it should have the best possible resolution okay so we asked what are the requirements so the people from the defense representatives who were there in the meeting they said sir we want a satellite which can change the orbit he said from which height to which height minimum we would like to put in an orbit of 400 or 450 kilometers because even if you want to have satellite survive for a year you need that kind of a height they said then we calculated and said what is the resolution we can give from that orbit but they said can we not you know double this resolution or improve make it better by two times so they were looking at something like half a meter kind of resolution so they said can the satellite not come down for couple of orbits let them image from that height give us images of better resolution say for a week's duration they can stay low and they can go up okay so this was a challenge given so uh, let us learn whether such demands are possible with satellites or not to what extent satellites can fulfill such demands the third challenge practical challenges we got is when the veerappan's menace was there in karnataka so we were called in and said that can you locate this guy he is eluding our forces are not able to see his movements very clearly looking non invasively from space from height we can give you some artifacts of you know when he moves what he does and so on so you can look for some clues but we want to locate and monitor you know how he is moving is it possible again it is looking at a person moving and that too they have specified it should be veerappan <laughs> so this is a very very our needs in the society is always very challenging the technology is one thing the challenges of needs are very different how to marry these two there is a kind of perennial type of creativity that is required that is why in spite of so many developments still we have problems which have to be tackled by the images so a, a good uh, observation good demand on the satellite imaging but we will just see how much is possible how much is not possible with the level of technology and the uh, systems we have can i have prediction from that side madam okay so this is this is a continuing type of demand that is there what is provided as weather predictions it is still they are useful no doubt today we have tracking of cyclones several days in advance we start watching how they are moving one of the greatest need is to predict the landfall where it is going to cross the coast because that is where you know damage will begin so even the best of technology when we are working you can do it only with an accuracy of plus or minus 100 kilometers so our prediction could be off by 100 kilometers if you are doing the prediction two days in advance okay so this was the state of the art ever since then our research was to see whether we can improve whether we can make the landfall plus or minus 50 kilometers instead of plus or minus 100 kilometers okay so weather prediction is a unending type of challenge and again it is so important for livelihoods the agriculture particularly 
particularly sowing season, that one week, if you are able to correctly predict, it is so useful to the, to the farmers for sowing operations and so on. So, it is a very valuable information. But we have achieved a lot of progress in this. It is not, there are models for this. Lot of data is collected and put into models. In fact, supercomputers are necessary to process this data, large arrays. Okay. And this is being done. So, we have short term weather prediction. Now, today we have one week, one week, one week. From today, next one week, IMD gives prediction. There is better accuracy for the first three days, very poor accuracy for the next four days. This is the experience I heard from the agriculturists. They were telling me these predictions are not uniformly accurate. Can we have better predictions for this? Okay. And also cyclones related thing. It is not only in India, all over the globe this is a, this is a common problem. Okay. So, weather prediction is one of the important aspects or applications of remote sensing and how are we tackling that? It is going to be more and more important. After five years, we should have better predictions about the weather, weather pattern. One of the problems is the samples we collect from different people with the different places, locations, the grid size, the samples are still too poor. We need to densify the sampling even today. I do not know, I always used to think, you know, if we can distribute this function to schools, it is all very, very simple measurements that we need. Temperature, humidity, rainfall, okay, and the wind. Okay, these are the four things you can do wonders with weather predictions. But we do not have sufficient samples to do that. How many of you are engaged in weather predictions? Any of you? You are there. So you can tell what is the challenge that is there. Today, to improve, what is the key challenge you are facing? Okay. And also, when you how to collect data from different places through a human system, accuracy is a challenge. And the time taken for between the measurement and actual processing. Today we have better means to communicate, but you know uh, the weather prediction activity has been you know very old activity in the country and the communication is also one of the big challenges. So, this is a very important thing. Can I have quickly Another couple of, yes, please. Uh, there would also be warfare satellites. Warfare satellites, okay. Can you elaborate a little what kind of things you will see? Uh, there would be satellites which will be keeping eye on other satellites and uh, they would have a system to take care of other satellites and bring it down. Okay. This is, he is predicting there will be more satellites after 5 years for security. For actually, he is mentioning about offensive uses of a satellite. But you should always be aware, whenever you are offensive, the other person also can become offensive. And that is a sure way of mutually assured destruction. Yes. So, this is the other side of the coin, but yes, security is very important. We have, though not you know the wars of old type, we have different type of wars today in the society, conflicts and between the countries in a region and also within the country also terrorism and so on. So, some of these require good intelligence 
this is a very important need even today we have more need for good intelligence so the satellites probably after 5 years should be focusing there will be more satellites focusing on the security applications okay do not offensive satellites it it produces good intelligence okay uh, that is the thing. can i uh, please this point uh. china is already having offensive satellites okay they have uh, co orbital capability yes they say for debris collection they have uh, yeah. Arms. yeah. So that can be there, there are three countries which are very active in what is called ASATs, anti-satellite weapons. Anti-satellite weapons, their purpose is to destroy the satellites which are in the orbit. Okay. So there are different techniques of anti-satellite weapon. Okay. Uh, so uh, that itself is a very deep subject. I will not get into that. The point made is already US, Russia and China, they have developed this anti-satellite weapons, although they have not deployed, although they have not been using just for deterrence they have developed because America is afraid of China, China is afraid of America. Yeah, be, 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 because at least we should show that we are capable of handling it. Hey, time is up. <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I, I will very quickly go through what I have prepared. Okay. But I think having gone very deep into the techniques, what I give now is some somewhat broader perspective about the images. Okay. Only one what I thought was we should be able to have a web of uh, satellites where, where much we can draw like Google. Should be able to get our process data. <coughs> because each satellite is having different resolution, different testing. So if I want a particular data of one satellite, it should be distributedly coming into one particular testing and we should be able to analyze it. Yeah, this concept in the very early times, it has been used from a number of satellites, you collect data through a system. You have another satellite which can see all these satellites. So you use a geostationary satellite to collect data from low earth orbit satellite and transmit because geostationary satellite is always visible to a location. You locate the satellite in such a place that you know you can have the visibility in the station, a ground station. So you can draw all the data and of course he has further made complexity by saying although different satellites have different resolutions and all that. Finally, the data should be made user friendly. So you need some level of processing capability. It is also something doable and probably you know some effort will be there in that direction also. Okay. So today remote sensing is recognized as very important for understanding the earth science. And earth human interaction what we call as anthropogenic activities what is the impact of these activities and modeling the behavior and also all the modeling observations and all that one purpose what is the purpose always we would like to predict like what we have done now but on a more data based approach evidence based approach okay uh, that is what remote sensing is recognized to provide us okay it is non invasive okay so the essence of all this is lot of investment is given by the governments for remote sensing developments you see an instrument starting from return beam vidicon that is the early television 
cameras were the very earliest type of payloads in the satellites, for example, this weather satellite, Tyros, Nimbus, and so on. Two, we had the mechanical scanners, which used to, a few detectors, it used to scan on one side, quickly come back, scan the next strip, come back. So this type of mechanical scanners. And then came the solid state devices like charge coupled devices. Now everybody is familiar with that. All our cameras are CCD based. Okay. So we were the first, one of the earliest, the French agency and India, we used this solid state technology very early. That's why we got advantage, advantage of early moving. And our satellite was the best satellite in terms of the civilian resolutions at one point of time in mid 90s. Okay. So then came using other parts of the spectrum through the radars, radar imaging. And here again, you know, you have the electronic scanning, synthetic aperture radar. You see a large area through a large structure and in the orbital motion, you know, you, there is overlapping areas seen and this image is synthesized to derive better and better resolutions. Okay. So it's a technique and today synthetic aperture radar in different frequencies, L band, C band, S band and so on, they find variety of applications, very important applications. The advantage is you can go subterranean features, you know, you are able to moisture or any metallic object. You can see in the radar much better than in the optical region. So lot of money has gone and uh, of course, another epoch is uh, the coming of the private sector, Iconos in 1999, they launched this satellite with private investment, with the policy of the US government. And from then on, of course, US played an anchor tenant role for private investments. They gave assurance of buying back data for a long period so that their investment became more and more less risky. Okay? These measures were very deliberate measures to promote industry. That is what is missing in our country. That's why we don't find a lot of private people, you know, putting risk investment because they are not sure what is going to be the government policy or whether they can get back the money. So when we talk about the future, always people are afraid of predicting future because always there is uncertainty. All predictions, 90%, they go wrong with the type of issues that are involved. So when we talk of future, there are many, many, many aspects involved. Okay, Technology advances is only one, one aspect of driving change okay so like drones you know we can't say what is going to be the impact on the images now whatever is very unique to remote sensing it is going to stay if it can be done better by another technology satellite imaging is not going to stay so essentially what are the you have freedom of access to space without asking anybody's permission. You can go into space and image over any part of the globe or even into space. Okay? That is the biggest advantage. Aircraft doesn't give because it operates in airspace which is sovereign. So you need arrangement with other countries. So there are some functions which satellites only can do, which aircraft cannot do. So for those functions, for example, 
all these green ones in a way it is a unique type of uh, roles of space which cannot be easily replaced by others okay so there had been wonderful developments advances and trends in satellites particularly convergence with other technologies like gis and more lately the mobile related technologies the navigation positioning and so on has given a good diversity to the applications okay so now we are seeing what is known as new space phenomena where companies are looking at you know for many consumer equipment which is produced in very large number the electronic devices have become very very reliable your tv for example very reliable mobile very reliable and this parts are produced in millions so they are more economical they are reasonably reliable so there are many companies which replaced the philosophy of space that is you go through very extensive testing spend millions and millions of dollars in testing and so on so they said we will follow commercially of the shelf component approach cots approach to use the parts we will take risk if a satellite fails after one year or two years we will replace it okay so this with this kind of approach and they said that we will produce data in large quantities make it a commodity okay and use machine learning artificial intelligence and so on so they wanted to have a disruptive approach to the pricing as well as cost of the imaging systems this is a phenomena which we are seeing now there are number of constellations which have come earlier it was very expensive to launch you know multiple number of satellites people are not duds they would have launched more satellites and you know got you know more frequent images why to take 16 days or sometimes even 60 days to cover the once the globe they said we will launch multiple number of satellites 100 150 satellites in a constellation and in a orbit we distribute and take pictures and transmit to them all to the earth so that we can have more data same quality at much lower price okay this is the approach which is coming so they said that you know we will not compete with what are uh, the very big companies are doing big companies are concentrating on highest resolution they always want to be you know the best in terms of resolution so we will not do that but we will concentrate on reducing the cadence the uh, the time between imaging and supply to the user which used to take weeks and even you know several weeks and so on now within an hour within four hours within the same day we will provide the image so we will have a scheme by which you know we will provide uh, the image as per the demand of the customer so we will at the same time we will have reasonably good resolution 3 meters resolution most of the applications are addressed so we will provide that so they created a niche for themselves you know with that approach so you see many constellations dove is hardly 5 kilograms okay and also when we say technology advances we should look at what is the kind of advances in several aspects relating to the satellite platform sensors and the ground infrastructure 
and life and reliability. So when we say technology advance, we should look at what is the evolution in all these areas and what is the advantage they are giving. When you look at the future, you should very carefully study how technology is advancing because there are several types of innovation, mostly incremental innovations. Many times you have breakthrough innovations like we changed the detectors for the sensors and you know we got a very different advantage with that. So and now you know orbital revolution, the architecture is changing. So and also you can change the perception in the minds of users. That is another type of innovation that is possible. So several types of innovations are possible. Technology advances, we need to see on which lines it will go. It is not possible to use satellite like a airplane as you are, you know, demanding. It follows the Kepler's law, the celestial laws. So, the satellite, you imagine this plane is always constant inertially and earth is rotating below. We prefer what is called sun synchronous orbits. As satellite is moving round, it sees the path below, satellite track below up to certain width which we call swath and next time when satellite comes, Normally at the heights we put, it, is, it takes about 90 minutes for one revolution around the earth. So within 90 minutes, earth would have moved a thousand kilometers at the equatorial level, about that, okay. So you see a next track and so on, systematically there is a shift next day and you can cover the entire global surface. So you can plan such orbit by controlling the inclination and the height. Once you decide about the height, what is the inclination which will give sun synchronous condition. Sun synchronism comes because this plane of orbit, because of the earth's oblateness, it precesses every day it changes about one degree. It just shifts one degree. Earth also goes round the sun by one degree. These two are made same and that is how the sun line and the orbit plane, the angle between them is always same. So the satellite always appears before any area under the same illumination conditions because the sun angle is same. Okay. We make use of the natural process for this and this sun synchronous orbit is a preferred orbit because you can image under the same illumination conditions. Your processing becomes more easier. Okay. So you can have two satellites. If it takes 16 days to cover the surface and come back to the same thing, so we have this repetitive orbits so that we can systematically cover the entire surface, come back to the thing and continue with this thing. This is what we do, all IRS satellites we do this. And it takes 16 days to cover this surface of the earth, a width of about 150 kilometers and a resolution of 10 meters or whatever it is. We can plan. These are sensor related design aspects, okay. So this is the type of orbit. So you want to see this area. There is a constraint because you can't see too much slant wave. Probably you can turn either the sensor or this turn even the satellite itself by certain amount and point towards the place of interest. This is another strategy. You only look at high resolution satellites, instead of looking a very part of area, you look at only interested areas, point of interest. So there is only some flexibility for you to do that. That's why you need more number of satellites if you want to cover any point, any day. Otherwise you have to wait till the right time. 
So, this is the constraint of satellite orbits. It cannot do what an airplane can do, ok. So, uh, that you should note. And of course, there are innovations like you know multiple satellites in a formation flight and so on, ok. So, there have been also lot of developments in the onboard technologies, ok, which have made satellites more weight efficient, more cost efficient and so on. Because of some limitations of our launch <coughs> capability, we had to make satellites low in weight. So, we made a virtue of a limitation and did better satellites because of that, ok. Now, you can see what is the evolution. 2000 kilograms, of course, capabilities are different, but you can see 15 meters resolution, 3 or 5 meter resolution, even you can have a imaging over a strip of about 5 kilometers, ok. So, uh, 3 to 5 meter resolution, 5 kilogram mass, 3 bands, ok. So, it is a array CCD, 29 megapixels, ok. What is the disadvantage with this type of camera systems? Maybe a radiometry is not as good as this. So, some limitations may be there for some applications, Maybe application scientists can tell better about this. So, in India we had lot of innovations on sensors starting from a sensor which is equivalent to Landsat's sensor 70 meters resolution to today we have capability to produce cameras with 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters, one foot type of object we can see. Actually for detection you need, you, 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 you can only detect two or three feet object. It depends on the shape and many other factors, background and so on. So, not only in the optical side, on microwave side also we had lot of innovations and developments. You can see uh, the our camera and the latest camera which is put in CubeSats, that 5 kilogram satellite Dow what you have seen, ok. Now, on the ground side also <coughs> what used to be in legacy systems, the analyst used to do lot of work. Now, we have the analysis ready data, but worldwide there is no a uh, common definition for analysis ready data, still there are many, many issues and, but this is a very important development. The end user can, need not have detailed infrastructure, expensive infrastructure and tools, he can make use of in the cloud environment, he can ha have access to tools, he can process and have his application. So, this is a very important development and of course, you know in future we will see more and more of this. And we have systems where you need not establish ground segment, but you can also make use of you know a ground segment which charges you according to use, ok, like AWS. Now, we have wealth of data freely available for the users, many of you are aware of this from Google Earth Engine to uh, many national systems in different data structures and you know the availability of data from a number of good satellites, Sentinel, 10 meter data multispectral, very good data is available, lot of Indian users make use of this data, ok. There are some allow download alone, some allow download and processing some allow download and also uploading, ok. So, all these resources are available globally or nationally and it will be very useful to look at them and some of the agencies are also providing the tools, software tools and so on and also visualization that is required for users, ok. Our own portal yesterday you had a very good uh, exposition on Bhuvan, so I am not going to talk about it. So, we have lot of demand for applications. 
if one predicts satellite images are going to disappear, it is unrealistic. At the same time, it may not have growth that one may see because the substitute alternates and so on may come. And we have, at least for in India, a lot of application needs, lot of application problems and also application orientation. No country I have seen have such wide range of applications like what we have in India. Okay? And so this is something very important. And for imaging, satellite imaging, there are many global activities, global frameworks, cooperative frameworks which demand the requirement of satellite data and so there also the relevancy is not going to go down. And of course, in our own country, with all this changed environment, if we have the same organizational architecture, whether it is going to help us in the growth and proper utilization of the opportunities and capabilities in the country, this is a question mark. There are many, many issues that have to be addressed. So implications of this structure is another thing we need to think of when we think of the future of our satellite images. So there are many, many things that comes to mind as you originally, without my presentation, you have answered many of the questions relating to the future of images. So I thank you for your active participation and thank you all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there are technologies. Uh, the first thing is how to reduce the possibility of collisions, how to uh, have practices which will mitigate the debris impacts is something. There is an understanding among the all the space agencies. So the, they have certain guidelines relating to creation of debris. If you create less debris, then you know you will. So how to manage that, there are certain guidelines, okay? And most of the space agencies are following now, unlike in, you know, two de decades back where these practices were not there. There is a technology development in what is called the ADR, active debris removal, okay? So you go and, you know, pick up the satellite which is likely to break up and become a debris. So uh, bring it back. That is another technologies like this, technologies to predict, you know, debris which is already there. And if there is a possible collision, you know, maneuver a satellite which is working to avoid collision, this, this is what is called a field, uh, space situational awareness. So, lot of capability investment is required for space situational awareness. Now, only very few countries has. America has the extensive infrastructure. It needs a global infrastructure. We have very modest facilities to see debris. Even today, less than four inches to track and see debris, it is not easy. Okay. So, what is tracked is above that size. What is not tracked is below that size. Even one centimeter, it is estimated eight lakh debris, per, you know, objects are there. So this is a complex problem. There is already international cooperation, but still, you know, risk is there. Today, all I can summarize and say is some orbits it is more risk is more, like 600 to 800 kilometers. But still, the risk of collision is less than one in million. So we are accepting that. 